There we go. Seems like, you know, trying to hit record is the, the hardest part of the interview it, process. That's, yeah. a, that's a good thing. I always forget my name, so, I mean, I guess... Oh, see, well, right. that's... Fortunately, we're on Zoom. It's right there. <laughs> it's right there. That's a it's good right thing. there. That's it. That's, yeah. This is actually my wife's account, so it comes up under her name all the time, and uh, I have Perfect. to change. I have to change it so I don't say, "Oh, I'm, I'm my wife." Uh, Eric Calvert of Switchblade Jesus. It is wonderful to talk to you this morning. Thank you for so uh, thank you for for signing on, joining in. Definitely. Uh, I couldn't help but notice Switchblade Jesus among the multitude of bands announced for Ripple Fest, Texas. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Uh, please, let's, oh, talk, yeah, it's, let's talk about that. It's 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 a, it's going to be a cool event. I know Todd's been wanting to do it for a bit. He's been wanting to do another Texas event for a good couple of years, but, you know, getting him over here, he's a very busy individual, so he likes to be very hands-on with those kind of events, it seems. Yeah. So uh, I know a couple of months, I'd, I'd say maybe – the end of the last year started planning out and everybody started kind of talking to people about, you know, what's going on. And uh, if, I guess if the shows are going to start rolling out soon and we got hit up by uh, one of the new bands is actually a good friend of mine, uh, a Holy death trio. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's, uh, they're actually a lot of them from Corpus from where I am and they moved to Austin and they, you know, started doing their own thing. And uh, John started working with Gravitoid Productions, who uh, does a lot of the bookings in uh, that area. And so uh, I guess they started getting things to go in hardcore, got with a couple of people and just started getting that rolling. Coolest thing is it's going to be at the ski ranch. And the Texas ski ranch is just a party, dude. It's everything. Like, uh, <laughs> I guess, like, I mean. I saw it, the it, bring your swimsuit notice. Yeah, it's... Uh, and it's jet skis, zip lines, skateboard. Okay. Like it's just, yeah, it's just, it's pretty much just going to be a huge party. Uh, the line went out. A couple of people heard about it already, you know, before the, the flyers started coming out. And I mean, tickets have already been selling and, you know, people are coming out from all over Texas to go to it. I mean, shit all over. I think I see a couple of Arizona. I know Louisiana. So, I mean, it's just starting to do some good pull. And sh dude, there hasn't even been the headliners yet. I mean, no, I know. Yeah, they're still waiting to announce that. So, honestly, I'm thinking, I'm thinking either uh, Wolf Fed or Mothership. I mean, those those are one of the two that's probably going to be the pull. And I, you know, you can't go wrong with either of those. No, either two. one, either one would you know be what fine. I mean? Yes. Like, yeah, like, <laughs> like, oh man, I get to play with my buddies in Mothership. Oh man, oh. I get to play with my buddy and uh, my brother and Kent and fucking Wolf. Oh damn, hard. I mean. When oh. when was the last show you played? Mm. You did Torch Torch uh, in October 2019. Okay, yeah, so. that was the last. One. Because what happened was, uh, I run a pedal business called Frost Giant Electronics. Yep, and <clears throat> and uh, Nam came up, and so what Nam is is the National American Music Merchant. I think that's the name of it, and so uh, that came up in January before like the actual pandemic really, really came out. Mm -hmm. So uh, we were going to do, uh, I was going to do my, uh, my January NAM stint. Excuse me. And then uh, when we got back, we we're going to jump back on tour. So we we're going to start with uh, the uh, spring break and then just go from there. But then when we got back, everything happened. So. Right. Not so it much. is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not yeah. so much. Not so much. So, so, so Ripple Fest Texas then would be your first show back. Ripple. As of right now, right uh, on on the book, you sneak is. one in. Well, we we there's a there's an anniversary show that we that uh, one of the <clears throat> the large venue here in town has, and they asked us to be a part of it, so we're going to do that. Oh. We're not like I'm still iffy on shows. I don't want to do anything that's real up close and up front. If if it's a good stage and people are separated because I'm going to be yelling, right, and I. I mean, I'm going to be yelling, and it just gets nasty. <laughs> you yeah, see no, lights. Yeah. Spit and so, flies. And, yes, yeah, absolutely. And, yes. and sweat because I, I'm, I'm an idiot when I play on stage, and, I mean, I'm, I'm running around, so I'm sweating and head banging, head and bangs. sweat's going – yeah, you know what I mean? Sweat's going everywhere. I just don't – I don't know. I feel weird if, if the venue's up close, up close. So 
we're, we're, uh, we're bouncing back and forth on a couple of things that we want to do. Uh, but yeah, as far as I know, this one's going to be our first one. We, we have one planned as long as it's good and solid. And then I think maybe, maybe two more shows after that. I, I don't, I don't, I don't know, man. It's, to me, it's still a little too early, but that's just my opinion. Yeah. That's just me. Is the, is, would bands be outside for Ripple Fest? Yeah. Okay. That's what I thought. Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's a big outside thing. Yeah. That's what I thought. Okay. So, all right. I, 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 I get your, your hesitation on the, the indoor yeah. thing. Um, it's, it's weird, man. It's weird. It's weird thinking about going back into a, a crowded room or even a not that crowded room with, 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 you know, humans. <laughs> it is. I mean, it I, is. It is. Well, it's a, well, you know, it's, everybody's well, breathing and moving around. <laughs> like, uh, you know, like I really, en- I, I, I have to say I'm, I'm bad that I, en- I enjoyed the, the, the quarantine because I stayed home and I just built all day. We just wrote and we just tried to, uh, you know, make it, make it fun and alive. And then I go up to Walmart or someplace to go pick up shipping supplies. And I'm just dread. Right. <laughs> like I'm, I'm fully vaccinated. I got like, I, I, I joked that I wanted to get all three of the shots just to make sure I'm just completely <laughs> right. just, just covered. Good. Yeah. Just good. Yeah. And uh, yeah. So I don't know. I think maybe I keep telling people to uh, September. I'd like to see how it looks around September. Mm-hmm. If it's looking better, more people have gotten shots and the the cases have gone down some. I mean, I know they have, but where 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 we feel better? I'm I'm the only uh, member in the group that doesn't have kids, mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. those two guys, you know, they have young ones. So you kind of have to be careful with everything. Of course. I mean, of course. It's just it's just how it is. What's the Uh, what's the vaccine attitude where you are? It's good. Yeah, because it's pretty. Yeah. It's, it's pretty mixed around around yeah, me. Know. Yeah, we're we're about we're about fifty fifty split. Uh, it's 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 right. pretty good. Our uh, our city is a uh, is a naval base, mm. and so uh, I you have the people that complain about it, and you know, I mean you're always going to have those, but then you kind of have to for the base and you have to, to go into refineries and you have to. So it's, yeah, I'd say it's probably mixed internally to these individuals, but they just, they have to get it. Mm. Like if they want to go to work, that's just, sorry. Okay. Don't let's say, you All know right. what I mean? So you know, you, you can whatever it takes, about, man, whatever it takes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like uh, every, everybody's complaining about them like that. If you want to go to work, bro, I don't know. I don't show you. Yeah. Ooh, tough shit. There you yeah. Go. <laughs> Um, Death Hymns came out mm. last November. Let's talk about Death Hymns because that is uh, that is a monster of an album that that the Switchblade Jesus put out there. <laughs> Thank uh, you. Years in the making, obviously. Mm. Yeah. Uh, now I saw you guys in Arizona in 2016, and then at Maryland Doomfest in 2018, and. Uh, Different band. Yeah. <laughs> Different band. You know, really, yeah, the, like, same name, you know, same you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, but different band. Um, I want to talk about the kind of shift in dynamic, bringing Chris in. I want to talk about just... Just it all? All of it, yeah. Because really, like, when I listen, when I listen to Death Hymns, it's like, this is a band that said, fuck it, we're going all in. That's real. That's why Death Hymns is Death Hymns. That that's that's you know that that was my my note to. Uh, I don't want to say the stoner metal community, but that was my note to to a lot. Um, so what happened was, you know, in we started the band out, you know, with just a couple of dudes just hanging out and having fun like everybody else does, and so uh, it, it took off and it did well. Uh, the first album came out. Everybody was happy with the first album. That took off because of uh, Heavy Planet and the Soda Shop. They pushed the hell out of that. They put us in this battle of the bands, and we came up second somehow, like, in just with a three-song EP. So, I mean, they, they really pushed it. Say hi to Bill, so, Soda Shop. Yeah, oh, my God, yeah, I love Bill. Bill. God, yeah, I love Bill. Bill. And, oh, God, he's such a great dude. And so uh, we, uh, we were doing our thing. Everything was going good. 
we had our CD release. Uh, our previous singer decided not to show up. He decided he did not want to play the show. Uh, I can't remember what it was. So uh, we went up to the venue and said, hey, you know, we can either do uh, instrumental or we can let the, the, the headlining band just have the whole set. Like they can have our set and their set. Headlining band was from some fuck fuck someplace out of, you know, wherever town. And uh, it, I felt it was better just to give them the set instead of us trying to, uh, trying to just make it work mm-hmm. on a dime, you know, on a whim. Yeah. So the next day we kind of sat down and was like, well, how do you want to do this? You try to sing, you try to sing, I try to sing. It sounded decent for me singing. So uh, we carried on. And uh, then we played the Arizona one that you went to. On the way back, uh, the other guitarist decided he wanted to leave. So we go, okay, cool. We're, we're a three-piece now. From a five-piece to a three-piece, we just got to figure it out. Paring down. Yeah. Paring down. Yeah. So uh, we're hanging out. We're doing our thing. And then the bassist, you know, he got into a couple of troubles. And uh, he's like, hey, well, hate to tell you, but I'm going to have to go too. I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's fine i mean right. i'm like i'm not gonna be like no you can't leave like that's, right. that's cool. stuck yes you're right i mean he's my best friend but i ain't gonna tell him you know he ain't going anywhere <laughs> so uh this was in shoot man this was like 2017 okay roughly around so me and john we're just kind of hanging out we're like i don't know what we want to do do we do want to keep going do you want to do you want to dissolve and do something else and we were talking about doing like uh uh black cobra kind of style mm-hmm. and just me tuned down to a and run a bass amp and a guitar amp and just just rolled as a duo i mean hell you know done it before like we've actually played shows it's just being him before okay. i mean you do what you got to do yeah so uh, we're doing our thing, and then uh, Chris kind of showed up out of nowhere. He, he actually was in a, a, a band, Anthem for the Sun, here in local, and that we used to play shows with. And uh, we're trying out a buddy of mine just, just because he wanted to hang out. And all of a sudden, Chris's name dropped, so we hit him up. You know, he's like, you know, I haven't, haven't really been in a full band, full band in a while. Are you sure? It's like, yeah, you know, because it's pretty much just us two. So, I mean, you learning is the perfect time. It's not like, you know, we're throwing you into this big mix. Mm-hmm. You know, you have a, you have a good learning curve. We can sit and kind of write the song. It's not like we got a show next week. Right. So, you know, we sat and did that. And uh, he is the house that Prague built. He and, and death metal too. He is like, Hmm. Uh, he, he is like Bathory and all of that. That's like his love. Okay. So he uh, he was kind of uh, hesitant on putting his into it. Like he wasn't sure on uh, on uh, <clears throat> how his uh, how his phrasing and everything would mix in. So we were pretty much you mean just, like in terms of writing. Yeah. 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 Your video is stalled, so I'm just looking at a beautiful, just still of you, just and it's That's lovely. Funny. That's funny. Your video did the same thing. Moments did ago. it? It did. Aww. It did. Did it to me. I'm okay because it's just you doing this, and I'm, I'm loving that. Oh, so, yeah. yeah, it's good. And so, uh, he was worried about his phrasing, and uh, pretty much just told him, "Hey, just write a song, dude, and bring it. Like, I don't care. Like, you just do you." So he wrote yeah. "Forgotten," and he brought "Forgotten." And it was just this do 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 do. It's just this weird. And me and John's like, like, how are we gonna write to this? This is something. This is something different for us. But it was great because it it took us out of that that comfort zone that we were in. That uh, four and four stoner blues rock thing that everybody does to death, and reminded us, you know, hey, you know, other, you know, other phrasing is fun. Like mm-hmm. it, it's, you know, you can really find some cool riffs and cool, cool notes with these things. So, you know, we bounced back and forth and we started writing. Well, the thing about Corpus is you have maybe two good recording venues and one of them moved to Austin and that was the one that we used. 
so we uh, we decided to do it on our own, mm-hmm. and we're like, you know, what? if if people can do this, you know, why can't we? So we can figure it out. So we bought uh, pretty much recording equipment, and uh, just started doing riffs. Uh, there is an E, not an EP. What the heck was I going to say? There's like this little demo on the Bandcamp. And it's got the hood engine of a car. And that's pretty much just the first of us trying out this recording equipment. Mm-hmm. And I, I put it up there. I was like, you know, if you want it, you want it. And people have actually paid for it. <laughs> Please don't pay for that. <laughs> There's, you don't need to pay. I can't turn that feature off. Right, right. So please don't pay for that. Just just download it. And uh, so we recorded it, listened to it, like we recorded the album. Or the demos of it, actually. I'm sorry. We recorded the demos of it, listened to it, sounded good. We we're okay with it. We we're going to start getting in uh, in the final, you know, writing stages of it after the demo. <clears throat> then John's like, "Hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna get this preamp for uh, for your guitar." Like, okay, cool. So he gets this preamp. I was like, "Wow, this thing sounds pretty good." It's like you know, maybe we should try to uh, try to get a couple more things. All right, cool. So we get a couple more things. Happy with it. Sounded good recorded the album album sounded good we were happy with it and then all of a sudden you're just building a studio yeah no yeah. no that's you're just exactly. bu- you're just building a studio that's all you're doing that's, oh you know what i think uh i think we just need uh these preamps oh uh, yeah no that's a good idea oh no uh i think we just need these monitors yeah oh yeah that'll help yeah no you're just building a studio <laughs> so he calls me he's all we need this octopri I'm like what is this octopri what are you talking about right. it's like oh man so yeah, there we you go. Oct- we got this octopree. I'm like, oh wow, the drums sound so much better. Okay, let's record the drums again. Okay, we recorded the drums again. Oh. Now the guitar's out of time, so we got to record the guitars again. <laughs> so let's record the guitars again. So we recorded the album three times almost. Oh my like, god, it, it was the most ridiculous thing. It was our fault. Like it seriously was our fault. <laughs> like it really was. It was the most ridiculous thing ever. Like we record stuff, we're, we're happy with it. John's like. I think we can make it better. I'm like, you think we can make it better? He's like, yeah, we can make it better. So he does a couple of things. He's like, well, I deleted the bass tracks. <laughs> I was like, all right, cool. Let's get Chris back in. Let's do the bass tracks again. Wow. So we got in there and recorded the bass tracks again. Dude, oh, my was, goodness. It, 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 was a, it was a circus. But it was a great circus, and it really – it, I, you know – I, I hated that the album took 18 years to come out and this became our Chinese democracy in a way. It, it, it took, it took uh, uh, an amount of time. It took, it, it took, took an a, amount took of a, time. It took an amount of time that shouldn't have happened. Like first it, record it was, was what, 2012, the first release, 2013, 2013, 2013. And then uh, 2015 is when ripple picked right, it up. And then cosmic cosmic artifacts picked it up and then ripple picked it up. Yeah, exactly. Cosmic yeah. picked it up because of bill, and okay. uh, they did the vinyl release, mm-hmm. and then we did uh, the L, uh, just a cent, just a, the digital and the CD. Yeah. And then Todd picked it up, and he did uh, the CD. Okay. And then uh, we did the the second coming of heavy with with him on that series. Yep. And that was our that was our actual. I think that's our actual only release with Todd. I don't know. I don't. Un- I don't know how he loves us so much, and I don't understand what I did to get his uh, to get his friendship. But I love that dude. He's, like he he kept he he kept us on the roster. Like he he still says we're on the roster, even though it's not on the website. And I don't care. Right. Like he kept us on it. Like when we were like dead in the water for like 2018 to 2019. I'm like, I really appreciate that dude. Like you don't have to. He's like, oh, you're Ripple, you're family. You're like I, thank you, thank you. He's and a that's very was, sweet man. He is. He's oh a very sweet God. man. I love that dude. And it was, it was so difficult. I, okay. Let me, let me rephrase it. It was not difficult going to curse tongue for this album mm-hmm. for, for this release that we just did. It was difficult not going to Todd and, and having him do it, but his plate is so full. Right. Like me coming out of nowhere and like, Hey, we're just done with this album. Like, here you go. Can you put it out for us? Like that's bullshit. Like that. You can't, you can't expect that no matter even if you're best friends and you, you done wipe the dude's butt in the hospital before and he's still going to do that for you. Right. So, I mean, schedules are schedules. So he's like, you know, Eric, I, I, I love it. It's a great album, but 
you know, you're not going to, it's not going to come out till like the end of 2022 yeah. or the beginning of 2023 because of how, you know, how backlog everything is. And luckily I got in it before, uh, the, the, the other vinyl collapse, apparently another one happened. Mm -hmm. And so everybody's waiting even longer. So we were fortunate enough to get our vinyl in, you know, before that happened. So, I mean, I, I don't want to say it worked out for us, but it kind of helped out. Like it was nice. I'm, yeah. I'm okay. Yeah. No. And, and you know, Curse Tongue does good work. With the oh, vinyl I love there. Him. Yeah. Oh, so. I love, like he's, he's been such a huge supporter of the band since the very beginning. Like he was the first person. It was, I told the guys like, our, my goal is I would like, like, I don't know. I'm, I'm weird. I, I try not to do this for myself. I try to do it for like Chris, you know, since he's a new guy in the band, mm -hmm. I want him to be on like relapse. I want him to be proud. I want him to be like, show his kids like, Oh yeah, I was on metal plate. Like that's my goal. Like right. I want to get him and John onto these like massive labels and there is nothing ever wrong with ripple or, or, or cursed or anything. Those are like the bread and butter. Like those are the most, like that's what built our, in my opinion, that's what built our, uh, our genre and our our uh, our community, or those labels, especially Ripple and Easy Rider and all that. But you know, Chris grew up with Metal Blade and all that kind of stuff. Right. So yeah, I think it'd be kind of cool one day to, you know, put an album to get picked up on that. But I told the guys like we're gonna have to fucking tour like no one's business. So <laughs> like, there, yeah. there's there's none of this. No, that's know, how it happens. Week, yeah. Yeah. There's you know you can't do the two week tours that you know on these kind of things. It's it's the full deal or go. And John's like, well, if I can quit my job, I'm like, shit. I think that's the goal for anybody. Right. <laughs> you can. I mean, you you can. You, can. Yeah, you could you be know. like me and stay home and build guitar pedals all day and pretend quit. like you know what you're doing. Quit your job. I don't know. Quit your job. I am I am a huge advocate of of quitting your job. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm always yes. bet on yourself. Yes. Always bet on yourself. Quit your job. Like, oh, it's just it's just pointless. Quit your you job. don't need it. You don't need it. Quit, quit that job shit you know you can grow you can grow vegetables in the backyard i did know that i've, I've got yeah. garlic in my backyard right now so what do you need a job you got garlic in the backyard yeah that's all I, that's a, that's actually all i would all i would eat if i could just me and raw garlic um <laughs> so anyway Wait. so anyway mm -hmm. how long front to back was this process where you made death hymns three times how long yeah Oh, <laughs> how many times we did this? Yeah, uh, I'd say it. 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 Oh man, dude, that was a long process. Uh, the the mixing, mixing sucked. Mixing was a mixing was a was a curve. Like because, like, I don't know, man. I, I'd say at least add another three hours onto the album, really. Because you you can have you you can have it you can have it right and everything solid, but when you bounce it out to start the mastering of it or to start doing a, a, a an equal mix, different levels of things pull back, mm -hmm. and you'll have like the guitar doesn't have enough highs, the drum is missing some low mids, you know. There's and you have to adjust it and then kick it out again because it's not exact when it kicks out from what I've learned and what we've all learned. Like when, when you're doing, when you're mixing multiple instruments on one thing. So it was that curve of, of that because I'm, I'm really anal on tones. And even though I still don't think we've gotten the best tones we've had. You I might say you're I, a guy who makes pedals. So yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, that's the issue I have. And I'm actually told to leave the studio when it comes time to mixing. Mm -hmm. because I'm, you put some more 80, you know, yeah, I'm bad. I, I sit there and I adjust and I adjust and I adjust and I adjust and I adjust. I'm like, it's good. I'm like, eh, it's not good yet. So it was, it was uh, the tedious thing of, of learning everything. It just added so much, like so much that you, you think, you know, you think you know what you're doing because you've played music for so long right. or you've recorded, you know, your tracks and, you know, send them out to people. But when it comes down to the full, full thing, it's an art. And I respect, you know, these, these engineers that really, you know, like Kent, you know, I respect these guys that really, 
that really have that ear for understanding that what's going to happen after it comes out or to be ahead of that curve or be ahead of that situation. Hmm. So yeah, I'd say add an extra three. I like that. That was, that was, that was an extra year that we didn't need. Honestly, it really was learning up, learning all that stuff. Like we could have had the album out a lot sooner if we just kind of figured out what we, what we should have done instead of just like, okay, we'll try this piece of equipment. Okay. Well, well, let's try this one because they say this one's better. Okay. Let's try this. Like just, just dump the money and get the good stuff. Yeah. It really is. I mean, that that's, I learned that the hard way. <laughs> so if, if Sweetwater has a great payment plan. Mm. Jump, use that. Use the Sweetwater payment plan. Don't, don't cheap out. God, don't cheap out. Well, what keeps you going through that then? How, you know, a year of sort of learning curve mm -hmm. in the mixing process. Three months in, how do you not stop and say, okay, we're sending this to Kent to be mixed. We're sending this. Um, we, we need to step back and do this this way. <laughs> uh, it was a, uh, I, I'd have to say it was a lot of honorary situations of, no, I can do this myself. And mm -hmm. I want, uh, I want, I want to like, it was, it was John. I'm not saying John was, hey, we're all honorary. Uh, John wanted to get his art down and wanted to get this down because we want to do cover songs and we want to do uh, just random releases on YouTube that we've been wanting to do for years and just put stuff out and not have to be bouncing back and forth from a bunch of people when it's just a single. Like full albums, I don't think we're going to be doing this again. Full albums, it's going to be, uh, we had the album uh, Mastered by God City, mm -hmm. the guys that do Converge and all that. I think we're just going to fly out there for the next one and just have them record it, you know, go in there for about three or four days, knock it out and just come home, let them do their magic. And, you know, we'll, we'll work on our, our individual ones like we wanted to here. Mm -hmm. I think that's the goal for the next one. I think we're about halfway kind of figuring out all that. So you've been writing. Yeah, I've been writing. Uh, Chris has been writing. John's been writing. Uh, we haven't had the full, we were just kind of going back and forth. You know, I've, I've got uh, an SL2, SSL2 uh, interface that I used to record guitar now. Mm -hmm. So I can record it for demos and stuff like that and send them back and forth to people. That's what I used for uh, me and my buddy Nick from Stonecutters. We did a metal injection set. It was, it was the Megadeth uh, Take No Prisoners mm -hmm. and recorded it off of that, to send it to him, and they mixed it out. So it was nice. You were in your made... kitchen, I believe? Yep. I was in, I was in uh, the filmmaker's kitchen, the guy that filmed oh, me. Okay. My house is like 800 square feet. It is pretty much a, a shotgun shack. Okay. And uh, the, the kitchen was just way too tiny. So it was a nice, his place. It was a nice kitchen though. Oh, it was extremely nice. Kitchen. Nice I, kitchen. Felt, I felt bad because I, I, uh, I broke that chopping board. He told me to hit it. So. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I cracked it in half. I felt bad about that one. That's yeah. A good, a good mm. cutting board is hard to come by. But. Mm -hmm. We're, we're, especially we're one shaped in, especially one shaped in Texas. Okay. We're uh, we're talking kitchen remodel now, my wife and I. It's Ooh, it's a nightmare. That's good stuff. It's a nightmare. Ooh, yeah, that's the good stuff. It's a lot of it's a lot of thinking. It's a lot of thinking of things and then being like, Wow, that's really expensive. We're not gonna do it. <laughs> I know. I know. I've looked into like I wanted to do the vintage kind of thing. I've looked into like the, yeah. the really nice gas stoves. Like <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. 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 Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're like not biking isn't even the expensive one. Like biking's not the expensive one. No, no, no we're good. Thank yeah, you though. It's, yeah, it's brutal. It's brutal. But, but uh, it was a nice. It was a nice kitchen that the filmmaker had. So anyway, uh, yeah, it was. <laughs> um, do you feel like, or how much do you feel like, with Death Hymns, you guys, sort of, found your sound? Yeah, um, I mean, you know, you, you, I'm sorry, you talked, but, but you you mentioned before, sort of the debut album sort of doing this uh, a stonery bluesy thing that that a lot of people are doing uh do you feel like death hymns is more on track for you guys individually yeah definitely uh you know i grew up with with sepultura and and obituary and and pantera and all that kind of stuff so i mean i grew up with thrash and, and heavy metal and john actually his he loves motown like that that's john's kick and so, uh, and, and of course he grew up with, you know, Nirvana, like his favorite band is Nirvana. 
and like I said, Chris is all death metal and, and stuff like that. And Prague, like he, he, Merciful Fate and Rush, that's, you know, he lives off that stuff. And so I, I feel it really is because <coughs> in the, the first album, it was just like, you know, a collective of individuals kind of putting stuff together. I wrote, I'd say 80, 90% of it, but, you know, it was more of the group effort at time of let's try this. Ooh, I, I heard this off of this song. Let's kind of, I don't want to say steal the riff, but let's use the riff and see how it sounds like, you know, back and forth. So that's how that kind of rolled about. So with death hymns, like, I mean, I love white zombie, I love white zombie. And so I really love the imagery and I love the, the fun style and the, the party and, and, and the music itself. So, when we were talking, when Chris came in, we were talking about, you know, how we want to do this, you know, white zombie, like white zombie always came up. And the only reason why is because, you know, is the, the mid nineties music. I mean, that's, that's, that's my age. I mean, that's, that's what I grew up with. So is that fun kind of, and we started talking about, you know, what we liked as a kid. And I was like, man, Sepultura has just always been, you know, the, the, the first three, I'll even throw four. You know, the first Sepultures has just always been in my heart. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, I got left on that one. And uh, it's a good album. I'm and not, so, I, not and so, and so, uh, we started talking about what we loved as a kid. And I was like, man, I just, and Power Trip came out, and Power Trip was just tearing up the place. And we, you know, we came here and all that good stuff. I was like, man, I miss that thrash feel. I miss that, that high on fire kind of energy. And, you know, the, I'd say like 2005 was one of my favorite years of the, the, the sludge metal genre. Sure. Cause you know, you had Kyle Lessa and Mastodon. You had a bunch of these people just really kicking out great albums yep. and Bison BC. I love Bison out of Canada. Yep. And so, uh, these are my dress clothes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, we we're going back and forth of what we love. I was like, let's just really just just see what happens when we just start writing some thrash again. And so we just started writing, 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 throwing away stuff and keeping stuff and then throwing away stuff. And uh, it got to the point. I was like, you know, I think I think we need to uh, change the band name. I was like, we're a different band. Yeah. And so I was like, no. and we are. And I was like, you know, even though I'm singing and I, that's not me on the first album. So that's, that's Peter. So I'm like, you know, it's, it's completely different from everything, everything. And so uh, John's like, nah, man, screw that. I, I love the name. I was like, I do love the name too. It's, 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 it stands out. People hate it. People love it. People think it's dumb. People ask us questions. Why the name Switchblade Jesus? So it works. So I'm like, screw it. We'll just leave it. You know, if, if, you know, I'll do my solo, my solo project is a different name, then I want to do a butter knife, Mary. And, uh, Oh my God, do it. <laughs> so, how could so, you not? Yes. Yeah, how could you not? Write that down <laughs> so you don't forget it. <laughs> yeah, I want to do butter knife, Mary. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, it's, I, uh, I just assume it's like Gothic post-punk. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's all, yeah. <laughs> It's gonna be amazing. It's gonna be a lot of synth. Awesome. Of, I can't wait. Logo. I can't wait. Can't wait. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, we, we like, and that that's that's was really with the the inclusion of Chris. You know, he was he was just forefront, just like just metal. I'm like, you just want to do like just do metal. I was like, okay, let's just do metal. And so, uh, like I said, he wrote "Forgotten" and brought that in, and the first song that i wrote on the new one was red plains mm -hmm. and then after that was behemoth and then we just took that energy and rolled with it uh behind the monolith was something that we played before and so uh we decided to to finish that song there's it's on a couple of live shows on youtube somewhere but uh <clears throat> we decided to finish that one threw that one on and we actually have an instrumental that's call that's kind of like call colludy you know it's just very very dramatic instrumental that we were going to include on this one but we decided to keep it like I, I wanted to keep i really wanted to keep it at exactly at 30 minutes for this album but i got two minutes under <laughs> it's at 28 and i'm not happy about that but i just wanted a fast pace hey man rain and blood was 26 
Was it? See, so, yeah. Okay. So. There you go. That's that's the whole reason. I wanted a almost punk feel. Yeah. And one of the main reasons too is because on vinyl, the uh, when you when you don't have as much space in between everything, the needle has a little bit more room to breathe. The vinyl itself sounds fuller and louder. So on vinyl, the album just sounds really, really well. And I'm really happy with that. This is kind of a, a, a last minute decision on that one. It's like we could add it or because we were talking to uh, Chris Tongue on it. And he's like, you know, I, I would really love to put one more. I'm like, I know, but I don't have one more that I just want to throw on. We could do a cover if you want, but I really like, you know, the length of the, of the, of the running time right now because I want the album to be full sounding on vinyl because vinyls, you know, that's the medium right now. In my it's opinion. it's either vinyl or digital. It's People the format of record. Digital. I mean, right how long an album is digitally. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. No, I, yeah, no, but I think, I think for, Oop. I got nothing on you. No, I do. Hi. Uh, hey. For what you're doing on death hymns too, I think it works as, as you know, it's almost, not that having more would take away from the intensity, but like that, you know, I'm sorry, man, that record's a punch in the face and you guys are in and out and it's, and it's sharp and it's efficient and it, and it does what it needs to do. And then, and then it doesn't do more than that. You know what I mean? I, I, I think, didn't want any fat. We just, we cut all the fat. It's just meat. It's just, just meat and muscle. That's the whole reason. I wanted the, uh, I really like doing, uh, uh, a story in a way for mm -hmm. albums and how they start and how they end. I like to have an ending and a, a beginning and an ending. And so we, uh, I wanted to have a, a church choir opening the beginning for a, a track that we had planned, but we pulled it back. And so I got with my buddy, Josh of uh, them with Tusks, that with Tusks. And he did uh, the, the, the beginning of uh, Scorch. Mm -hmm. So it had a nice somber feeling in the beginning. You weren't sure what you're getting yourself into. And then it slowly like brings in and brings it in. Yeah. And then uh, Red Plains just pretty much just takes the album and runs with it. Yeah. That's it. It's ferocious. Um, what's the timing on writing or, you know, or, or getting like to, say, to. By the end of this year, I'd like to say we're finished. I, have... I'd like to be done. I'd like to try to, I'd like to get back into, uh, since, <clears throat> since we have, uh, the writing that I am more happy with and I feel that now we can all just write and bring stuff to the table and throw it in. Uh, it's going to be a lot easier. Uh, I hate saying shit like this. Like I was, I was pretty much the only guy that wrote in the beginning mm -hmm. and it gets much after a while and I only wrote that one album or, or you know, whatever. But when, uh, when you're going into a, uh, into a practice and you have a wall of, of, of what do you think we should do? Let's try this. Let's try that. Let's do this. Let's do that. And it was pretty much just me every day, just trying to figure out what new to write. Mm -hmm. Just, I don't know. It got weird. There's not that many bands here in town. So you don't have a lot of, uh, inspiration like we're the only whatever we are <clears throat> in town it's either like grindcore or tejano or a lot of reggae mm -hmm. so uh we get our inspiration a lot from either the old stuff or bands that we have played with and so i don't know it the inspiration was just it was weird back then but now it's a lot better now it's a lot better now it feels i don't know it, it doesn't it it feels more uh oh it just it just flows out it's, it's really nice. Like I can write a riff. I can give it to uh, Chris. He can run with it and bring it back to something else. I'm like, Oh, I didn't even think of that. Yeah. Let's, let's change this whole thing up. And now let's do this instead. Mm -hmm. Instead of me just writing the same one and fours, one and fours. Right. And everybody's like, Oh, that sounds good. I'm like, that's cool. That sounds good. But what do you do different? I'm like, Oh no, let's just leave it like that. I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> let's, 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 let's build layers. Let's, let's try something different. Right. And so, uh, yeah, like, I can't say that, uh, you know, being the only person writing isn't a bad thing. I mean, I, I think that the problem with me is I have, uh, I have ADHD really bad mm -hmm. and I have 20,000 different hobbies. And so, uh, to keep my mind going, I have to do stuff like right now I'm building a Harley, 
building a, a chopper with my brother-in-law. Okay. So, yeah, uh, I, I, I make toys. I make a bunch of toys. I do a lot of stuff. So I always have to keep myself busy. So uh, the bad thing about that is when I don't have that creative out, like that creative input, it, it kind of, I don't know, it, it kind of lulls me down a little bit. Hmm. So I don't know. I, I feel like now it's, it's a lot more better. Like I love the guys. I love the, 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 the first incarnation of, of Switchblade. It was great. I mean, it was the best time of my life. I mean, now it's the best time of my life as well. But I don't know. It, it's, I don't know if it's with, with just being one guitarist now, it, it feels like it's more freeing mm-hmm. or if it's just the, the, the bringing Chris, cause he's just a, a whole new life force that I needed. It really is like we can bounce stuff off back and forth all day long. Like we, I mean, we go to practice and we'll write two songs. It's just me and him. It's, it's, it's nice. It really is. It's, it's a nice thing. <laughs> Sorry. Sounds nice. It's, no, I mean, it's, it, that's just, that's the ideal, right? Is, is that kind of creative conversation back and forth. That's, that's exactly it, what you want. It helps. Like it really does. Uh, because I don't want to, I'm a, I'll have my style of playing and it'll just be my style of playing. Right. And I don't want that. I want, I really want a, a theatrical feel. I want a huge thing. And there's, there's, there's things that I can't think of that will add to the song that someone's like, Oh yeah, we'll, we'll add this drop real quick. And like, everybody just stops playing real quick and then we'll bring it right back into it. I'm like, Oh, that's dramatic. I love it. Like, I didn't think of that. Right. That's cool. Let's right. do that. Yes. Yes. You know what I mean? I get it. So, I get it. So, so being the, being one person to think of all of it for like three years, it got much after a while. Yeah. It really sure. did. Be, well, because you know, the other guys, they, they, Billy didn't really write that much. He, he wrote a few songs and he's a great, he's a great guitarist, great person, but he, I don't know. He just didn't write that much. And then uh, Jason, he just kind of show me where to go and I'll kill it. And he did. And it was great. I mean, he's, he's amazing, but you get to the point where I'm like, mentally, I need to, I need to write outside of my box and I need somebody to help me with that. And so I was going to start taking lessons, mm-hmm. but lessons just didn't, I don't know. I just can't sit with lessons. I don't, I guess I don't have that, that, I don't know. I don't know. So I, I, I think with him, it just made the, the, the writing so much easier. Like, yeah, seriously, dude, we'll, we'll write two songs every practice. Like, and they're, they might not be good songs, right. you know, but it's, it's something. Right. Like, and you might take, we, might take three years to record them. It might take three years to record them. Yes. But uh, now, now we actually record our, our practices. So, so that's, that, that's, I have to say that was the, that was the best. That's, I think that's one of the main reasons. Actually, yeah, I think that's one of the main reasons why John wanted to get the recording set up. Is so we can record practices so we don't forget shit. Because, dude, we'll write some nice, nice riffs. And then we'll get to practice. Mm. Gone. every time yeah and, and, uh, like we'll, we'll write i'll come home and i'll start playing them and I'm like what was that man no it, it, it was a double gallop into a skip <laughs> no it wasn't that sounds stupid mm. so now i record them so i'd say we have we have a good amount of material just sitting there and and we could pull it all and piece it together if we want or sit down and just really focus and write, write something else. I don't know. It's nice though, because we have that material now. Like we, we've, we've, we're in that comfort zone and we're, we're in that, that space that we can just, we can just go for it. And it's nice for once. Any new songs ready for Ripple Fest? Um, yeah, there's a few. Uh, I don't know if uh, we're going to pull them out because I feel bad about the, uh, the Death Hymns because we played that album a good like you heard a few of those songs when you heard us yep. eight years ago so so like i don't know i, I don't know i don't know if we're gonna uh, tease it we were talking about it but we'll see i'll see what the other guys want to do we, we might pull it off in, in the 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 house of rock show mm-hmm. and then see how it feels after i don't know we might do a cover we talked about covers too covers are fun what are you gonna cover i don't know like uh mm. we've been talking about 
Uh, just something ridiculous. It has to be something. It has to be something not in our genre, because we were well. We were doing uh, uh, butthole surfers for a while, and then we had a I show. Remember. in yep. Well, we had a, we had a show in, in uh, Lafayette, and the band right before us. They they ended their set with <laughs> the butthole surfers cover. I was like, well, not doing that one. There goes that. Yep. There goes that one. So I don't know. Maybe some. Uh, maybe something country. Just something ridiculous. All right. What did the guys talk about? I got a list somewhere. We got a list of what we've been doing. That you got to write that shit down, man. Dude, yeah, no, God, oh man, I am the worst. I have. I'm trying to. I had to hide my my board. People probably see that earlier. It's my board of like all like the pedals that have to go out and what numbers I'm at. I got another board over there of uh, what orders are pending, and I got to write everything down. Like my my notes and my phone is the most ridiculous thing in the world, dude. It is. It's just, it's just so long. I feel you. I feel that. Deeply, <laughs> deeply. Post-it notes <laughs> so, everywhere. Oh, yeah. man. I am, oh, God. Yeah. I feel anyway, bad about post-it notes. Yeah. <laughs> One more thing, and then I'm going to let you go. Uh, I'm going to put you on the spot. Best band in Texas. Oh, man. Best band in Texas. Oh, it was happening. Power trip in uh, in the in the big guys. Man, I'm gonna go with Mothership and our guys. I don't know, man. Houston's pulling out a lot of good stuff too. Uh, if you're gonna if you're gonna say the the world, you're always gonna go ZZ Top. God, I'm gonna have to say Pantera. Okay. I'm just gonna have to say Pantera because, like, for for me, like, they're they kept they kept that heavy alive forever in, in my opinion no matter like if you if you like him or you hate him i i i hate phil's views i think phil's a piece of shit and like i'm not gonna let him tarnish the my childhood music so i i, I still will go with them just because in the 90s what they did for a lot of the music that people didn't know like you you still had death and obituary and and uh Morbid Angel. You had, you had a lot of good grinding death bands, but in uh, in the forefront and uh, the media side, I guess, you know, mm -hmm. Pantera really kept it going well. You know, it kept us out of the pop as long as possible, in my opinion, because Metallica was pretty much they're done during then. In my, I mean, after the Black Album, like, I, God, people don't look at me where Load and Reload is not crap albums. They're, 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 for if you take them out of Metallica and have them by themselves, yeah, but there were years in between, right? Because the Black Album was what ninety one, one, mm -hmm. and Load was ninety five. Yeah, so that's that's a crucial four years. Oh, it's a crucial four years. We know these. We know these these long crucial time changing years. Well, well, no. Well, no I mean, <laughs> okay, just change your band up. That's, well, I, no, I mean ninety one to ninety one to ninety five grunge happens. Oh yeah. I mean that's that's that era. No, no, no. Yeah, that that is that that so, that's 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 when everybody cut their hair and solos weren't allowed. That's it. That's it. I mean, so, they really were. So you know, then you you know, in that era, you had, in my opinion, Pantera because they were still the 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 loud mouth, you know, with their uh, with their Pantera vulgar videos, partying, still keeping you know the the life alive. I guess right. whatever you want to say. They were the face but, of the thing. Yeah. They were the face of the thing. They really were. No matter if you if you think their music's horrible, if you think Dimebag's tone is the worst, or you think Phil's a piece of shit, like they're still like they're still who they are. They they really did a lot for metal music or music in general, in my opinion. Like Dimebag, you know, he's still talked about. You know, guitar tone albums playing whatever. I mean, that seemed like Eddie Van Halen. I mean, Eddie Van Halen will be spoken. I don't. I don't think there won't be a time that Eddie Van Halen's name won't be spoken of. You know what I mean? So I mean that. So I'm gonna have to go with Pantera for for Texas's you know greatest band. All right. Uh, but now, Mothership for for my dudes, and then Power Trip for the for the Kings. Like Power Trip's killing it. God, I love Power Trip. All right. Power Trip. I'll take it. I'll take it. I'm gonna stop the recording. Before I, I do, Eric, thank you so much. I'm not gonna sign off the meeting yet, but I'm gonna stop the recording. So hang on just a second. Thank you, Eric. Switchblade Jesus. It's very much appreciated. All right, bud.